The star of the movie Chuck, based on the uh, life of Chuck Wepner, is Liev Schreiber, who joins us. Of course, Ray Donovan, director, writer, producer. What did you think when you got the invitation of what this show, this show you're on right now, was all yeah. about? I, I, to, to be honest, I, I'm, 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 I don't really follow sports that much. Yeah. But uh, last night at work, all the guys were very excited that I was coming. Mm. And, and was, <laughs> so you feel a little right. better. I felt well. I, well, it actually made me a little nervous because I thought, "Whoa, this is a bigger deal than I thought it was." Oh, so you thought this was going to be hardcore sports? I actually thought this was going to be a radio interview. Oh, you did? Yeah. You didn't realize it was TV. No, I didn't know that you, they would see my feet. The, the cameras here are just for show. Yeah. Don't yeah. worry about I, that. I yeah. Don't don't worry about <laughs> that. Uh, but I love I love this story of Chuck Wepner, But I'm familiar with it because I remember when he fought, and uh, you can kind of. Uh, brief people on Chuck Wepner, why you loved what Chuck Wepner stood for, since he was an okay boxer, but his his uh, like regular life was what was fascinating to me. So what drew you to this role? Well, one of the sports that I do follow is boxing, and uh, I was sort of uh, surprised that I hadn't heard his story. I didn't know who he was, particularly when I found out that he was uh, in uh, the, the inspiration for Rocky. Um, but he was... Um, he was ranked in the top eight at one point. Uh, he had fought him some incredible guys. He fought Sonny Liston. He fought Ernie Terrell. He fought um, George Foreman. Uh, pretty impressive list of heavyweights that he went up against. Um, and in 1975, he fought Muhammad Ali and uh, was like a 40 to 1 underdog. Uh, there's just some hilarious footage that I saw of Marv Alpert interviewing people in Cincinnati and they all saying they want their money back because who's this guy and you know he doesn't deserve it. this is right after Ali fought uh, this is right after Ali fought Foreman and Zaire and everybody thinks he's the second coming which he was so so people uh were just convinced that he was gonna get knocked out in the first three rounds and uh it's an extraordinary fight because um sort of like the film by about the ninth round the whole crowd in the in the Cincinnati Coliseum is chanting Chuck's name just that he's staying on his feet, just that he's surviving this this, this punishment. But he's just a real tough heavyweight who um, later on in life uh, kind of was living in the shadow of the Rocky movie and, and, and didn't handle it all that well. He sued Sylvester Stallone, didn't he? Uh, yeah. Because if you look at Rocky and some of the names that are used in Rocky, you, you don't have to, you know, there's no gray area there. It looks like that it's all based off Chuck Wepner. Yeah, I'm... Uh, they, I think they settled out of court on that, and, and everybody's okay now. But did you meet Chuck when you were doing? Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, uh, Naomi and I took Chuck and Linda, his wife, uh, to see the Golovkin fight at the Garden. Oh, yeah? Yeah. But he said he had the, uh, over 300 stitches, I think. He's broken his nose a couple of times. If you watch the seven fight. Seven times, I think. Seven, seven times? Eight, yeah. But he, he was me. sort of leaning on Ali, you know, later in that fight like he was holding on for dear life but, oh, yeah. but everybody kept saying well how come Ali can't put him away then he became this sort of underdog cult hero that the Bayonne Bleeder which is not a great name for a boxer by the way <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's a testament to his heart and his courage you know I think uh, Stallone did a great job in the movie I think with that aspect of Chuck's life how do you make boxing scenes realistic uh is my problem with boxing movies is uh, you know uh, even in, even Rocky is the boxing looks so fake and I, I guess I guess because the the essential premise of going to a fight is that you're going to see somebody get punched in the face and when that doesn't happen it it feels kind of fraudulent <laughs> uh, and Pooch Hall who does a really great job and plays Muhammad Ali in the film and I are sparring partners in real life we box, we train together and so we had we had a couple of fighters on uh, Ray Donovan. Uh, professional fighters doing some background work for us. And I was watching these guys and because they're so good and so familiar with each other, they were making contact without hurting each other because they knew the choreography so that they were actually hitting each other and, and you could see the sweat flying off their heads. And I was like, well, that actually feels like fighting. So Pooch and I uh, rehearsed the choreography for a couple weeks and, and I got hit a lot because that's sort of what happened in the fight. Did you get like really hit? I didn't get, it never, with Pooch, no, but there was a Bulgarian fighter, because we had to shoot the fights in, in, in Sofia, who, um, who I, there was something lost in translation with the, whole, <laughs> <laughs> with the whole telling the Bulgarian fighter that he was allowed to hit me. 
<clears throat> you're supposed to be off limits. You're the star. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, off limits for the really hard shots. Yeah. You know, yeah. Pooch had hit me in the forehead, you know, probably like 830 times, Philippe says, which was just, just to get the wig moving and the sweat popping off my head. But this Bulgarian guy, was I could just see it in his eyes when they said you can hit him, but you can't hit him, that he, he had no idea what they were talking about. <laughs> Mustache looked good. Thank you. Thank you. Chuck gave me a lot of grief about it, actually. Was that a real one? Uh, yeah, you know, no, I grew that mustache. It was actually the only hair that I had during that photo. Well, no, I had sideburns, too, which, which was really horrible because I'd shaved my head to be bald under a wig. Uh, later on, a, a, a really good hair person said I didn't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that I, that's, so, that's tough advice yeah. to get after you've shaved your head. Yeah. yeah. So I had, I, you know, and I'd go out, I had to wear a hat all the time because I literally, I had, I don't know, I wish I had a picture of it, but I had, I had sideburns. Can we put that up? Do we have a picture a, a on the horn on the mustache and then shaved head? And it was, uh, it was pretty horrible. And I lived like that for about two months. But when you're done with something, like, are you still in? Is this uh, the picture there with? Uh... Oh yeah, that's the. You see, there's a wig there, but underneath that wig is a shaved head. The only thing that's real in that picture is the mustache and the sideburns. Imagine if you pulled that really, really attractive wig off my head. But those are the those are the chains you wear in real life, though, right? Oh no, yeah, those, those <laughs> are mine. of course those are nice. Those are and Jim Gaffigan is in the movie. That's Jim. Michael Gaffigan. Rappaport is in this. Great, 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 great supporting cast. Elizabeth Moss is. Just extraordinary. Uh, can Naomi. you can you stay for another segment here? Sure. I want to ask you about uh, Hard Knocks. Sure. Because I didn't realize for the longest time that that was your voice. M neither did my mother. <laughs> but but it's it's so distinctive. But I want to talk to you about okay. that because I thought we might have a voice off here. A I, little... I I thought about that too as I was you know, as I was listening to you yesterday. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Let's go. Yeah. Right now. And and could you, you start? <laughs> you go first. No. You go. Okay. Could you simulate a fight scene during the break with simulate. one of my guys, one of the Danettes? Do, am I going to get hit? You can hit them. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. All right. We'll come back with Liam Schreiber right up to this. The <clears throat> movie is Chuck in Select Cities today, nationwide next Friday, May 12th. We're back after this in the Dan Patrick Show. Around and fool around. Right, gives, we're back. He gives me a very condescending Okay. Look. All right. So, <laughs> So I'll Why look like one of you. Okay, so you're going to oh, tell us how you orchestrated this in the fight. So oh, how, how do you do this? Well, most of the time, I just, I go. Yeah. Just, just, now, yeah. what do I do to make it look? Well, you were supposed to make that sound we practiced okay. during this. Okay, okay. Oh, so you, up like this? Yeah, yeah, that's how it is. So, 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 yeah, relax. Well, that, we, we can't really do that in this right. situation because we, we want you to relax yeah. your arms, and I just go. That's it. Up to the face. But I'll you bring it. your hands Oh, yeah, so up. what you do is you, you act like you're grabbing your face, right? You just so Paulie's going to hit you. Okay. Well, I, the oh. cameras are over there, so it'll have to be this way. Okay. All right. Here we Twice. go. So that's a wide looping hook. Okay. okay. Oh, so he's got to get oh, That's yeah. a shot, Paul. You see? Yeah. Right. Can I watch? How right. close can you get? This is so much fun. We can do this for hours. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do this with my kids for hours. Dude, it's not great. Holy's close. Though. Holy's clap is not that good, though. Hey, you got to relax your arms. Ready? We'll go slow. There it is. There you oh, go. I like that. That's it. That's just a workshop. Yeah. Right. <laughs> now hit him for real. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's would, would, would you rather, would you rather get hit in the face or the gut by accident in a, in a fight? Let's say you're at a box. In the face. Yeah? Really? Yeah. The face doesn't hurt. It doesn't? No, not till the next day. <laughs> but the, the kidney will, doesn't. Yeah, you know, the, yeah, the, the, the solar plexus and uh, really the worst is the liver. I don't know if you've ever seen that in a fight where, uh, you know, you see guys that they, the box, I mean, you know how tough boxers are and you see that. They get hit right here, and yeah. you see him wince and go yeah. down to the mat, and the, yeah. that's a liver shot. That's the worst. Liver shot. Yeah. Guys, practice that. Yeah. Is there a clapping noise you make? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not a clapping. It's a little more squishy yeah. sounding. It's kind of a squishy boy yeah. just peed myself noise. <laughs> After we're talking to Liev Schreiber, who is uh, playing the title role of Chuck, also in uh, Ray Donovan. He's been in uh, X Men, Wolverine, Spotlight, Salt, the Scream movies. Been a boxer on and off for uh, 18 years, but this is a uh, biopic on uh, Chuck Wepner, the uh, former heavyweight who uh, went 15 rounds with Muhammad Ali. In his 10 years in the ring, Wepner endured two knockouts, eight broken noses, 300 stitches. Toughest fights, though, outside of the ring. Um, is there going to be a sequel to Goon? There is. It's, a, it's called Last of the Enforcers, I think. Really? Yeah. Have you shot it? Yeah, we shot it. It's fun. Oh, it is? Yeah. When's it come out? 
I thought it had. It had come out. Uh, maybe not. Maybe. Oh, well, maybe it's only ha it's only come out in Canada. Maybe it's still on its way out here. It's, it came out in Canada, and it's on its way. Out. It's on its way. Oh, it is. It's oh, okay. Probably, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that would have been awkward if it did that's come the out. Kind of, that's the kind of thing I should know. <laughs> yeah. When but, I when I go on a television show to promote myself, <laughs> I should know the films that I'm in and when they come out. Uh, I hear it's fantastic, though. That's of course it is. Once it gets here, once it crosses the border, it's going to be my, great. Yeah. But when you look at an enforcer in boxer, uh, yeah. in, in uh, enforcer in uh, hockey, as opposed to a boxer, yeah, are, what uh, similarities at all? Aside yeah, there from is, the fact there you're is, throwing punches. And it was one of the things I was interested in, Chuck, too. I don't know if it's because they're Canadian or because they're hockey players, but enforcers are some of the nicest people you'll ever meet. There's a kind of, there's a kind of politeness and a, a sweetness. Yeah. I met a lot of these guys, you know, getting ready for the film. And it's really, it's kind of shocking how polite they are. And we, you know, uh, for, the, for the hockey show we did, uh, uh, we put mics on guys. Uh, and uh, you could hear them just before the fight, they would always kind of ask, sort of politely. It's like, you want to go? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, after the, after, the, after the whistle, you know, yeah. After they call the penalty, sure, let's go. Okay. But they know that's their job. Yeah. Like, I may not that's right. dislike you, that's right. but I have to fight you. Probert used to tell a story about how young guys coming up in the league would ask him, Bob Probert, yeah. young guys coming up in the league w would, would just, you know, uh, it was like a, a a notch in their sticks. Sorry, not to, to 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 have fought Probert. So they'd come up to him and they'd say, "Excuse me, uh, uh, Mr. Probert, <laughs> would you mind giving me would you mind giving me twenty seconds after the whistle?" And that just meant <laughs> would Bob Probert beat on them for twenty seconds to show their coach that they were willing to do anything for the team? Would you have been an enforcer if you played hockey? I would have had to have been because I couldn't do much else. Yeah, you know, I can't skate. I can't. I can't handle the puck. So, yeah. Because there is, and, and we're getting rid of boxing, the, that, the fighting part of this in hockey. Mm -hmm. uh, is that good or bad? I'm not, you know, I, <laughs> it's hard. It's a tough one. It, I, I don't know what the research is on the concussions. Are the concussions mostly from fighting? Are the concussions mostly from falling, impact hits? I mean, it's such, to me, I, I hate to say it, but to me it's always been a part of the game, and I, and I it's just I know I know it's arcane, but I, I I still I get excited when it happens. Well, you're an enforcer in Ray Donovan yeah. as well. So if you're looking at all these roles, that here you are a fighter, here you are a goon, and then here you are an enforcer. Mm -hmm. You're kind of being labeled here, aren't you? As a tough guy. Yeah. Do you like that label? I don't think it's a terrible label. But we thought you were going to be overly. Oh, not serious. me. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, th yeah. I, I say no, no. I'm not a tough guy. You're no, not a tough no, guy. Not at all. But but people think you are. But that's good. Yeah. You like that. That's a valuable thing to have people think about you, whether it's true Does or it not. Does it keep you out of fights? Because yes. People, yes. When's the last time you were in a fight? I don't remember. I don't think <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. but, but you are, we thought you were going to be an overly serious you guy. You said, in introducing me, you said that I was a boxer. Well, didn't you? I'm not going to correct you. I've never boxed in my life. I mean, I, it, I train boxing. I, you but trained never as a boxer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. But that doesn't make but you a boxer? A, that's a fabulous thing to have out there about me. Yeah, and, but stay with it. I'm trying exactly, to help you. Doing. Now you just blew your oh, cover yeah. here. What's going on with you? I'm thinking. All right. So uh, he's sort of a boxer. <laughs> sort of a boxer. Let's leave it alone now. Enforcer. Ray Donovan. But you're also with Ray Donovan. John Voigt is on. John Voigt was a boxer. Yes. Yeah. Could you take John Voigt right now? Now, yeah. You could. I think so. But back in the day, no. a younger John Voigt versus you right now. No way. John Voigt kicks your ass. Yeah, big time. Apparently he was very good. That's what I. He heard. seems kind of serious too. About no, I, and he, he's he's also a big, strong guy, and he's got big, heavy hands like Chuck. Yeah. I mean, if you look at Chuck, John too, their, their fists are like the size of my head. They're big guys. You're also the voice uh, hard knocks, the yeah. voice over uh, announcer. So how how does somebody come to you and say we're doing this show hard knocks? Do you want to do it? Um, you know, a, about 20 years ago, I was fortunate enough to meet Ross. Greenberg, Greenberg got yeah. me into uh, uh, VO, and it was one of the best things that ever happened to me. I, I, I love that aspect of my work. I love the shows that they do, um, and the writing is really everything. That's you know, I, I, you're a voice guy as well. It's like when you get someone who does that right, it's, it's, it's magic. And uh, I think sort of 
in the great tradition of, of John Vicenda and NFL films, they were writing this really dramatic stuff that, that I, I think that kind of juxtaposition of athleticism and poetry is really fantastic. And I lucked into a show like that early in my career. But do people recognize your voice? No, no. Because you don't sound the way you do on Hard Knocks while I'm talking to you. Okay. So what happens when you get <clears throat> in that voiceover booth? I think it's probably because I'm trying to rip off John Vicenda. Because John Facenda was the voice of NFL films for years. And he was just a newsman in Philadelphia. Yeah. But had this unbelievable. Amazing voice. Well, yeah. and, and do you have On a favorite? the frosty fields of Minnesota, the Vikings made their final stand. That whole thing was like, I get chills every time. I, I remember it was the Redskins and the Raiders. And Joe Theismann was the quarterback. Yeah. So it was the silver and black clad masters of intimidation nearly took Joe Theismann's head off. It's just amazing. And then it was the 1812 overture and it... Uh, and you and see I'm a guy like, in slow-mo with his yeah. lips going... <laughs> <laughs> and the steam. Was oh, like, oh, oh they, amazing. That, you're right. They created yeah. poetry, violent poetry. Yeah. 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 What, have you, what else have you voiced over? Anything um, odd? I've done a lot of docs. Um, I, can, I Honestly... Um, I can never remember them when I want to remember them, but I, I must have done around 200 docs. Uh, I think probably my favorite, and it, it changes from time to time, was that Magic uh, Bird doc. Did you meet them? No, no, never. But, but when uh, you get something like that, they give you lines to read a script to read. Absolutely. Do you need to see the video? Do, do you need to kind of get more of the fullness of In it? In the beginning when I started, I would watch it. And then they would sometimes play it in the booth for me while I was doing it. And I, over time, I got to the point where I found it was distracting to watch oh, it. Oh, really? Because if you were reading the writer's work well, you weren't actually paying attention to the picture. And if the writing was good, you, you actually weren't paying attention to the picture. You were, you were paying attention to the, to, the, to the writing. And you could make good money as a voiceover guy. Could you do like a movie like In a World? Oh, yeah. Like, well, I do it in Chuck. But oh, you mean like a like a movie phone guy? Yeah, yeah. Like you, you yeah, yeah, you'd be the guy that does the movie trailer. Yeah, that would ruin me forever. It would. Yeah, that would ruin me. Because then every time I did the sports shows, he'd be like, "Oh no, it's the movie phone guy." <laughs> yeah, no. uh, well, we appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for having and, me. And uh, you uh, taught us now how to act like we've we've taken a punch here. You, uh, you I, I, I hope you guys practice that because eventually you could have sort of a five-way melee in here. And I I love <laughs> yes, Paulie. A lot of fans emailing in saying they're disappointed Liev didn't really deck me. They, they really wanted me to go down hard. You wouldn't do that. I can't. It's a, it's a legal thing. I can't oh, it is. Oh. <laughs> Paulie, would you sign a waiver that yeah, I mean, for the sign show. A waiver, can knock you out? <laughs> yeah. For the well, show. I made that request way before we got to L.A. that, that we were going to work that out. Uh, the movie is, uh, Chuck, it's uh, in select cities today, nationwide next Friday. There's Oscar buzz here. Oh, really? I know. I, I don't even yeah. know. Like, yeah. I don't know what that means to it you. It just makes me giggle like a little girl. Really. <laughs> but, but Oscar yeah. buzz in May. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know, I what, don't that, know what that means. Yeah. When, when are the Oscars again? Have you gone to the Oscars? Yeah. We what? won an Oscar for Spotlight. I say we. Like, well, okay. I one, but I didn't. You know, but did you win? I was in that movie. Did, uh, did you get a trophy? I got to hold it. I was on stage. Yeah. We lay down on the floor of the stage you know we were so but surprised. you don't get one no it's best picture oh yeah well shouldn't everybody get best you know, like absolutely right right no were you there for la la land oh yeah was i there was i there <laughs> no i wasn't there but i remember watching it thinking i was there what did yeah. you <laughs> yeah. what did you think when you saw that i i was i was worried about warren Beatty. that and he was going to get blamed well i was worried about both of them that they were going to get blamed for that and i felt bad I because thought, oh, he was trying to, people thought he was joking by stalling, like, okay, we know who's going to win here. Yeah. And then he was sort of playing you know, He it made up. a face right before yes. he handed it over to her. And uh, I thought, oh, something bad's happening yes. here. And they're never going to let people over 40 do this again. <laughs> that, that, made me, that made me feel bad. Have you presented? Yes, I have. How'd you do? I did okay. You know what they usually do is they put me with a very attractive woman. Mm. And I find that that helps because you can just... You Nobody's know, noticing yeah, you. Men are set, you know, men are in that situation. Men are accessories. <laughs> you know, they're like, we're like handbags. That's, that's why, that's why tuxedos all look alike. Cause we're, we're just there to adorn. So nobody asks you who you're wearing when you walk the red carpet. Well, sure they do, but that's, do you answer them? I do. Yeah. Huh. 
well, otherwise, I don't get a tuxedo. Oh, you don't get a free year. tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the movie is in select cities today. It's Chuck and, of course, the great show Ray Donovan and uh, voicing over Hard Knocks on HBO. He's Liam Schreiber. Uh, thank you for joining us. Great Thanks to see you. Me. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.